How can you tell a blind man is on a nudist beach? It's not hard. Don't get that one. Are we on? Oh, okay. Hello and welcome to another Marty's Matchbox Makeovers unboxing video. And this is number 195. <laughs> uh, now we've got a few parcels here. Without further ado, I shall start with the number one parcel for today. And it's from Norway, believe it or not. I've never had one from Norway before, or have I? Yes, I have. I've had one from Norway. I'm losing my breath. It's from Herman Instafjord from Kristiansand in Norway. And I've got a freshly sharpened knife. And I'm going to open the package now and see what it is. Oh, hello. We've got a couple of little vehicles in here. And possibly a letter. Is that a letter? What is that? It's a piece of paper folded up. It's not a letter. Is it? No, it's a piece of paper. So, no letter. And cars, cars galore. What have we got? We've got three beautiful little cars here. There's no letter. And there's just three little beautiful little cars. From uh, Herman Istjafoot. Herman, did I say Christian? No, that's where he's from, Christiansen in Norway. So what have we got here? They're all red. There's a theme here happening. This one here is a little ute. Uh, it's actually a Jeep. And it says on the bottom there that it is the... I can't even read it. I can't read it. If I give it a close-up of that, can you read what that says? Anyway, the door's open. It looks like the windscreen's missing. And there's probably something meant to be on the back. Who knows? I'm very disappointed that I can't read that, even with the magnifying glass. It's because the mottled effect of the black and the silver base, it's kind of like camouflage and it's hiding the, the words. Anyway, what else have we got here? This is a, a track excavator or something. An excavator. It's the Drot or Droit excavator joint i think is french for right so i wonder if they brought out another one that was the left one but this is the right one and the both tracks are missing but i'm sure i can get those from uh recovertoy.com or one of those spare parts sellers so that's not all loss that's good i can 3d print a windscreen for that and see whether there's a back required for this one the third one today in this opening sequence this third model from Norway is the number 22 Pontiac and it's the Sports Coupe and the doors are missing which is a little bit annoying It'd be good if those doors fitted wouldn't it but I don't think they will although they're not far off um, I don't think I've seen this one before this is a newie I, I don't have one of these this is the first this is a first for me so that is quite exciting that I've got now a new model that I'm unfamiliar with and it needs making over, which is great. So thank you, Herman Istafjord from Norway. These are a great three models that I don't have. I think I've had the Ute once before, but not those other two. That's brilliant. Number two is from another place that is not common, Spain. Valencia, no less. And the person's name, I'm not sure if this is his name, Ivan Esbri Andre. Does that sound like a Spanish person's name? I'm running out of breath again. <laughs> I'm so excited. Ooh. Looking in here. What have we got? Some intrigue. Okay, empty package. Now it looks like there's a letter. Oh, wow. There's a few funky things in here. This is not common at all. This is very random. I don't want to surprise you just yet, so I'll keep that hidden. Uh, look at this waxed paper envelope. Oh, it's a nice colorful letter with pictures and words all over it. Let's see what it says. Dear Marty, congratulations for your wonderful channel and amazing work with the Matchboxes models restorations. It's absolutely great. I'm a follower since October 2018. <laughs> Uh, Bedford Tipper Truck 1961 video. Ah, 2018. Yeah, that sounds about right. 
Uh, Spain has had a long tradition of reproducing miniatures of cars, trucks, aircraft, ships, trains, with brands such as Guzvel, Guloy, Echo, Nakoro, Pelen, Bullican, BVC, minicars, etc. Uh, so I send you not a matchbox model, but a miniature truck, 158 scale of the Guzvel brand. It's in the catalog since the 70s, mid 90s. Guzvel, Guzvel is a very popular Spanish brand of miniatures, located in Alicante. Alicante, my sister has a villa there. A lovely place it is too. Uh, the model is a Margaris Druitz farmer's truck with the two rear lights missing, some stripped on paint, some deformity in the plastic railing. The model had many variants, uh, farmer, crane, military, tipper, car carry, etc. As an extra, I'm sending you ch keychains and badges of the Royal Pigeon Shooting Society <laughs> of Valencia. The Civil Guard and the Tenerife Firefighters. I'm more interested in the Royal Pigeon Shooting Society. Didn't know there was such a thing. The RPSS. I hope this presents, I hope this presents, are part of your collections. As your channel in my life and hobby time. Oh, hang on, we've lost a little bit in, in translation there. Anyway, best regards from Valencia, Ivan Esprit. All right, Ivan. Now, I am intrigued by these things here. Look at this. Where's this pigeon? fancier's shooting badge thing he's talking about. I'm very excited about that because that is so random. What is this on here? Oh, this is a tiny little pin badge. It's enamel and gold in colour and it says on it something in Spanish and it says Valencia and there's a picture of a knight, a knight's helmet and a crown and something on top of the knight's helmet. I'll show you that. Okay, that's unusual. Okay, let's have a look at this model. Now, what brand was this model again? Can you remember? It was a Guzval. Guzval. It's a Guzival. Right. So, let's have a look at that. It's a... It's not a tipper. It's all plastic. Plastic wheels, plastic base. Uh, oh, no, there is a metal cabin there and a metal lower chassis there. The wheels don't seem to match. Oh, the rear ones are painted silver, the front ones aren't. That's very odd. Oh, it's probably worn off over time. But you know what? It's not bad. It's, it's not in... It's in pretty good condition. I wonder how old that is. I must look that up. So it's a Guizval. Have a look at that. You don't see that every day, do you? Uh, what else have we got here? This is like a medal. Is this a medal? Is this the thing about shooting pigeons? There's a sword and a crown and a set of golf clubs. <laughs> what is that? I don't know what that is. A gate? That's pretty crazy. Oh, it's the same symbol on that. So what is this? Royal Pigeons Shooting Society. It's probably not that. The Civil Guard and the Tenerife firefighters I reckon mm, it's difficult to know what's what I'm gonna have to get Google translation onto this and work out what that little badge says there so let's have another look at this thing here they're very nice things and it's very nice of you to send them to me because you know it's always good to have something quirky to make these shows more interesting here we go what is this one here bomb bomberos Oh, this would be firefighters for sure. There's an axe and a shovel and stuff all over it. Look at that. Santa Cruz de Tenerife. So that's all very interesting, isn't it? Uh, yes, the Tenerife firefighters. That's what that would be from. Bomba Bomberos. 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 <laughs> this could be the pigeon shooting badge. It says Picon on it. I think that's Spanish for pigeon, maybe. Could be. Interesting. And that could be why the knight's helmet has got feathers on the top of it. It's probably pigeon feathers, I'm thinking. Anyway, most interesting. Thank you very, very much, Ivan. I shall put this letter in my collection. And this here is really quite unique. And as are all of these pieces. So, thank you again. It's awesome. What's this here? Next one. This is from James Griffin of Rippingale in Bourne, UK. And it feels like it's a 
a magazine. So I must have a look. What does it say on here? It says a book. So let's have a look. See what this says. See what this is all about. Maybe it's a matchbox themed. God, that's a tough envelope. <laughs> Even that one, I'm getting weak. It's a matchbox. What is it? What do we got? The SAS? Special Air Service? Special Auction Services, the SAS. That's what it is. So what is this here? Fast and 50, celebrating 50th anniversary of Matchbox Superfast. Have a look at that. Didn't know they had such a magazine. Oh, I've done that one. All right, let's see what this says here. Oh, bit of Australianism here. Good day, Marty. He's put, uh, I hope everything is well in your household and that you enjoyed the chocolate and custard we sent you last time. Although we did chuckle at the custard disaster you had in your recent unboxing video. We, I had some custard tonight, by the way. <laughs> You won't believe it, I made it and it was perfect. I had it with bananas, it was lovely. Uh, we have sent you a copy of this special magazine commemorating 50 years of Superfast, which has just been released here in the UK. My son James thought it may be of interest to you when we saw it in the news agents. Hopefully no one has beaten us to it and sending you this magazine. We know you do not restore Superfast vehicles as a rule, but maybe when you start this will be a welcome reference. As you will see from the book, a lot of the older Leslie models were updated with Superfast wheels. Some of the vehicles matchbox made in the superfast range are quite bizarre the designers must have been given a bit of free reign when they made these thanks again for your entertaining videos we enjoy watching them as a family on a saturday afternoon oh cool you do not need to pin us on the map as we have one from the last package and the uk is getting slightly crowded yeah but i've got a new map now so uh, i shall definitely be putting one in all the best to you and your family and you hope you have a happy christmas and a great new year from dan sarah james eight lucy six and melissa two from Ripping Gale in Lincolnshire. Wow, that's a very thoughtful gift, and I shall, once again, I shall be making myself a cup of cocoa and going to bed early and reading this magazine, because there's so much to know about Matchbox, it's unbelievable. You know, I've only just scratched the surface in all reality, but there is always something new to learn, and this is great little magazine full of loads of colorful photographs of all the models in the super fast range. So, very interesting, and thank you again very much. Oh, there's a, a roll of matic there too, even. Alrighty, I shall be looking at that later. Oh, now, this one here, this one here could be quite exciting. Um, this one says on it, it's got some sort of candy in it. But not only is it just candy, it's not just any candy. It's actually come from, get a load of this, you won't believe it, Romania. The last candy I had came from Mexico, and I think it had been sitting out on the tarmac at Tullamarine Airport in a 40 degree day, because uh, the actual candy aspect of it tasted a little bit off, uh, and I think maybe it was tainted by the heat, and maybe it passed its sell-by date by the time I got to taste it. Wow, there's a lot of stuff in here. Holy moly. This is a mega package. Everything's individually wrapped, like, multiple times. <gasps> wow, look at the candy, though. Oh, wow. That's a real mixed bag there. It's like Christmas mix, which is quite appropriate because it's Christmas. Oh, that looks like a jet fighter. Awesome. What are these? They're Sugus, Sugus Classics. Sugus Classics there. This is quite exciting. So what have we got here? We've got a few vehicles and some candy. Let's quickly read this letter. Let's have a look. Hello, Marty. I've been a fan of your videos for some time and noticed that Eastern Europe has little to no presence on your map. Well, I'm here to help change that. In the box, you will find some toys I stumbled upon on my weekly trips to the flea market, and I figured out they would be better in your hands, even the spare parts. The military vehicles are what kids, including myself, used to play with in the 80s, growing up in the Soviet bloc. They are no matchbox, but it's what USSR offered us as an alternative. Please enjoy some Romanian sweets and send a warm hello to Julie and Kevin from Sorin Spiru in Bucharest, Romania. Wow, let's have a look at these. I've got to quickly open these up because there's a lot of stuff here to get through. Oh, actually, ha! Wow, would you believe it? That is a complete ripoff. <laughs> of a matchbox car that had the two dogs in the back looking out the window. 
How's about that? And it's got a for sale sign on it. It's like from a from a car lot or something. But you know what? For the Soviet bloc, it says on it made in Thailand. So maybe they ship some stuff over. This is great. What's this one here? Same colour. This one's blue as well. Oh, look at that though. That is a little ripper. I do like that. Oh, this is a corgi. It's made in Great Britain. <laughs> Where are these Soviet block models? <laughs> so that's a corgi. It looks like a Hillman Minx or something. Oh no, it's a standard Vanguard 3. I always think these models always look like uh, Hillman Minxes for some reason. It's kind of probably because they all had the similar sort of look to them. That's pretty good. And that one's been painted too. I'd love to uh, find out what colour that should have been and return it to its original appearance because that's got a lot of age about it just exudes it oh this is the jet fighter i wonder if it's a, a flogger or a mig or something is it russian i'm not sure right hey i think i've got one of these this is a matchbox all right it's the mirage i have got one of these did i do one of these up or not it's on my list of things to do i think but somebody's painted this and coloured in the stickers or just put some random stickers on it to make it look different. So that's okay. This, I've got two of those now. I can do them up in another aviation themed makeover. Coming up soon. Oh, this looks good. Oh, this is a proper Russian one. It's got ru Russian writing on the bottom of it. And it looks like the kind of thing that they'd have in the army over there like an amphibious armored vehicle that's so cool and it's in good condition too i wonder if those windows or whatever they are were supposed to be bright orange like that that is so crazily weird mm, never seen anything like it before in my life but so cool and pretty heavy too there's a lot of metal in that and look at the russian writing on the bottom it's, it's good isn't it three more to go that is brilliant. Quite excited about that. Oh, here's another military vehicle. Look at this. And this has got similar uh, writing on the bottom, except that this one's got number 30K. This one's number 10K. And it's got a guy in the roof there, and he's manning a machine gun. Again, it's another armored vehicle. And it's got those similar portholes on the side there. Uh, strangely enough, it's all green and black except for the guy's face, which has been painted pink. I wonder if they did that at the factory or whether somebody else did that. But pretty damn unique. Never seen anything like that before. So cool. Ah, another aircraft. This one is a civil airliner. It is the Matchbox. Is it Matchbox? Hey! Yes, it is. <laughs> 1973 Airbus A300. Uh, look at that there. That needs some stickers and a bit of tightening up there on the old rivets. And a new paint. Oh, and the rear. Oh, the elevators are missing. Still, that's all right. I do like a challenge. The two aircraft, uh, three vintage oh no that was a dinky that was a thailand these two are like russian or romanian or something last one in this package it's another aircraft looks like an f-15 or 16 or it's an f-16 did i do one of these did i do one i think i did one i did one of those didn't i well now i can do another one <laughs> so that one there is the matchbox skybusters Number 24, the F-16. And on there it says 1978. So that's a really nice little model too. Needs some new stickers, a paint job. It'll come up a treat. So thank you very, very much. Spiru from Bucharest in Romania. Now I've got to try some of these treats, haven't I? Do I have to try a treat? Oh, they, oh, they look nice. This one's biscuits. Rom sel dublu batoan, whatever that means. I'm not checking the sell by date, I'm just looking at the ingredients. 
Mmm, chocolate. <laughs> All right, I'm going to try this one here. What is this? This is a Rome Baton Crema Rom, and uh, it's a 30 grammer, whatever that means. It's 30 grams. Should I try one? And all these other things are the same, look. They're all the same. There's a few of these. So I can afford to have one. Oh, that one looks good. It's got like Rice Krispies in it. Crispy milk. I'm, ooh. I'm drooling thinking about it. Alright, I'm going to try one of these Rom bars. Let's see what they're like. Oh, it's dark chocolate. It says on it, Bucharest. Bucharesti, actually. Uh, here we go. Oh, oh, it's soft. It's got toffee in it. Soft toffee. Hmm. Actually, it's very nice. Okay. The ROM bars get a thumbs up from me. I should try some of these other things later. Oh, so many different ones. Vanilla. Look at them. So many different things I've never seen before. Anyone else want to bite this? And these look like fruity boiled sweets. And I shall definitely be trying some of those later as well. I'll just finish it now. <laughs> I'm going to put these back and have some more tomorrow. And this is a rom. Look. This looks like a double rom. So very, very thoughtful. A lot of a lot of uh, thought gone into that package. Thank you very much. I've got all these goodies to eat, and with Christmas coming, it's going to be great. All right, Scotty Knuckles. Where's VA on the list in the USA? Vancouver. Virginia. Is it? <laughs> I knew that. Okay, uh, this one's from Vancouver. Where's VA? Virginia. Scotty Knuckles in... Waynesboro and this has been released by biosecurity control can you believe that they've actually released it <laughs> what is this it's a piece of cardboard oh hang on a sec we've got some cars some packages some little things some tools a letter some pictures oh oh Hi! Here's something I haven't seen before. <laughs> Department of Agriculture, Australian government, opened for inspection. The Department of Agriculture is responsible for managing Australia's biosecurity. All goods arriving in Australian territory are subject to biosecurity control. Your goods have been screened using detected dogs. <laughs> Alright, let's have a look here. Scotty, Marty, I've been watching your channel almost since its inception. You, Julie, and Kevin shenanigans have kept me entertained while I was recuperating from two spine surgeries. Ooh, that wouldn't have been nice. I was only able to watch TV for months on end. And I'm disabled now. Oh. Your channel is very entertaining and sincere. Please don't overwork yourself and try to switch Kevin over to Scotch from weed. <laughs> Uh, I don't collect or restore die-cast cars. I do love watching the transformation, however. I collect, trade, sell and restore wristwatches and small clocks. Okay. I've sent you matchbox cars that you may consider restoring or customising. Found, found in the attic. Also, I've sent a few tools I use to clean and fix watches for you to test out. Furthermore, your show brought back memories of matchbox cars in dime stores during my childhood in the 60s and 70s. I also remember Corgi models that were far too expensive and I dreamed of owning them. I cannot remember any specific models, but I had back then. I had back then for some reason but my faves are the Ford, John Deere tractors and older models. Lastly, thank you for your service in the RAF. If you're ever in Virginia, did we say it was Virginia? If you're ever in Virginia, USA, let me know. As I say, keep on keeping on. Thank you and best regards. Let's have a look here. This is great. What do we got here? Some, a little selection of vehicles. What do we got this here? It's a super fast, it's made in China, it's a Nissan 300 ZX, no less, made in 1990. So it's quite a late model, isn't it? Oh, excuse me, that ROM is coming up. Um, this has got a sunroof 
It's got a lot of glass in it. If that was a real car, look at that. I'd be blinded by the light driving around in that. Now, this one here. Second one today. From Scotty. Now, this is a six-wheeled buggy thing. Six by six. Weird. Very weird. ATV, all-terrain vehicle. Made in Thailand, this one. And it is a matchbox. So matchbox now are made in Thailand, are they? It's uh, interesting. It's got a jerry can on the front. Coil of rope in the back. A suitcase or something. I'm not too sure what all that represents. I'll give you a close-up of that. See what you think. It's got no steering wheel. It looks like it's controlled by levers. Here's one. And that, oh, I'll do it like this. This is a Holden Ute. Look at that. Can you believe it? This is an Australian vehicle. I recognised it instantly. This is a beautiful little model. It's got Holden badges on it, a number plate, headlight details, and a, a nice detailed um, back there. What would you call that? What do they call the back of a ute? I forget. The tub. The tray of the ute. Yes, yeah, the tray. Tub, tray, all, all good. Now, this here is like a fire chief's car or something. I'm not too sure. It's got a yellow cross on it. What does that denote? Medical, emergency, troop carrier. <laughs> Wouldn't have picked it. It looks like the seats in the back are made of wood. Very strange. Have a look at that. And it is a matchbox. How many cars did they produce? I've never seen half of these things before. It's quite amazing. Every day there's something new to see. This one here is a quite a nice model. I like this. It's a bit of detail in the back there. This is another made in Thailand model. And it's kind of like a ute, but not a ute. It's Mattel. It's a barger bullet. It's matchbox. It's Thailand. Barger bullet. Barger's a race across the desert as far as I can remember. This one's number 724. And it's got a whole load of spotlights above the front window there and a spare tire on the back have a look at that what do you think of that let me know in the comments now we've got two more vehicles to go this one here is a very ultra modern looking sporty vehicle and this is made in thailand it's a street streak made in 1995 and it lacks detail but it's probably supposedly very clean skinned for speed and aerodynamic economy but look at the size of that front windscreen that is huge you would hate to get a stone in that it would cost you a thousand dollars to replace in the real world now the last one today actually has a opening boot so it's it's got this extra little feature it looks like a humvee it is oh it's got good suspension too check that out nice little extra sort of uh, detail so they went the extra yard with this one. It's the Humvee, made in China, this one. And it's a matchbox. These matchboxes, they were made in China. Where else did I say? Thailand. They're all over the place. Anywhere but England. Even this America, this Australian vehicle was made in Thailand. I guess that's where they can make them cheap, I suppose. I don't know. But I do like the suspension and the fact that it's got a opening panel on the rear now these little tools here what are these oh hello these are some tiny little tiny little I guess they look like they are swabs or something cleaning swabs must be used for tiny little areas there they're quite specific they're like cotton buds but they're miniaturized which come in handy we've got some what are these pegwood bundles four millimeter stirring sticks and these ones here are like little dental picks for cleaning out awkward to get at spots so they'd be quite useful wouldn't they they're very unusual though look they've got like a sort of a, a groove in the back there for some reason almost i don't quite know what they what that's about anyway they come in very handy so thank you very much scotty i'll put these into my hobby room and the next model i shall experiment with them as i haven't used these before and if they're any good, I might have to try and source some extras. Okay, Scotty, I'm just glad to hear that you're finding my channel entertaining and sincere. And uh, thank you very much for taking the time to send me this package. Because I know 
that it's not an easy thing to do. So, awesome. Thank you very much. Now, one more last one today, please. This one here. So lastly today, I've got these little packages from Fly Nova. Apparently it's a new toy that's coming out for Christmas. It's a flying fidget spinner. So what does it say here? Dear Marty's Matchbox Makeovers, nice to meet you. Fly Nova is a flying fidget spinner. Uh, shares a similar feature with fidget spinners which spin constantly. It also has the capability to fly like the aircraft. But the most important thing is that with a bit of practice, it can come back like a boomerang. So an Australian boomerang. Let's uh, have a look at these things. This, so it comes with a rechargeable cable. And it doesn't really look much. It's very, very light. Oh, they call it the UFO. You charge it up. Switch it on. So let's give it a go. I'm going to switch it on. There's a little switch here. Oh, and that's up. So switch it on. Oh, it's got some flashing LEDs. Now, how do you start this thing up? You spin it or something? Oh, here we go. Oh, oh! <laughs> That's something you don't see every day. A flying fidget spinner. Okay, now reading the instructions, apparently if you throw it on an angle, it's supposed to come back. So I'm going to give that a shot. Ready? Let's spin it up. Oh! It went behind me. It's fun though. I know it needs a bit of practice, I'm thinking. Oh! Yes! Boomerang. These are fun. <laughs> so they're called Fly Novas. And, oh, look at that. See the uh, LED display? <laughs> God, they're crazy things. But they seem like they're a lot of fun, and they're virtually indestructible, I'm thinking. So, flying over. Thank you very much for sending me <laughs> those. I'm going to have fun playing with those on Christmas Day. I'm going to package them up and get them out on Christmas Day with my grandson and play flying fidget spinners. <laughs> I recommend you just check them out on their website, Fly Nova. I'm a natural. <laughs> Ready, Colin? Think fast. <laughs> Yay! Back to you. Oh! Between my legs. Much as I'd like to continue playing my Fly Nova, i better stick to the rules and put the pins in the map. So I'm going to do that now. Okay, time to put the pins in the map. First one today is green, and it's for Herman Isterfjord from Christensen in Norway. And I'm going to put it right here on the coast. Uh, there we go. That is for Herman. Right, I've got a nice black pin here for Ivan Esprit Andreas from Valencia in Spain. And I know exactly where that is because it's marked on my, lap, my map right there. Wonderful. Thank you, uh, Ivan. So, Spiru Soren from Bucharest in Romania. I know where you are too because Bucharest is also marked on the map. There we go. That's for Spiru, the light green one there next to the other darker green one. Scotty Knuckles from Waynesboro in Virginia. This one's for you, the light orange. Uh, let's put that in here. Is that a little bit there? I hope so. Let me know in the comments if it's off target. Now I have a new map of England here because if you have a look up there, England is just festooned with pins and I run out of space. So Colin Patterson from Hayes has sent me this map and he's going to be the first pin in there and it's just I think that Hayes is just east of Slough so I'm going to stick it in there and hopefully that's close enough that's the orange one there for Colin Patterson 
And the last pin today is this sky blue one. And it's for James Griffin from Rippendale in Bolham. And by my best estimations, uh, Rippendale is approximately here. And hopefully that rings true for you, James. And thank you for your contribution. So that concludes this week's unboxing. I hope you've enjoyed it. The fidget spinner was great fun. Uh, as were all of the packages, and I can't wait to get tuck, tuck into that, some of that chocolate. So until next week, this is Marty saying goodbye and thanks for watching.